In this episode of Local Brew, I'll catch a ride with one of Maine's coolest tours, the Maine Brew Bus. So basically, I uh, do brewery tours in Portland, in the greater Portland area right now. Then, I'll visit Maine Beer Company, who's brewing up some exceptionally hoppy craft beer. So it's going to be pretty intense hop aromatics on this one. Bam! This is hops in a glass. Right yeah, there. this is one, uh, it's one of my favorites. And I'll help brewer Mark Fulton brew a batch of their stout, Mean Old Tom. Have you ever spilled any of it? Oh, yeah. Absolutely. You're supposed to say no. I mean, no, I'm a professional. I would never spill. <laughs> then I'll get down and dirty and help Mark clean out the mash tongue. It's kind of awkward, huh? Yeah. And I'll check out their temperature controlled conditioning room. This is where all of our bottles, after they've been filled with beer, come to chill out for a little while, okay? Then I'm heading to one of Portland's best beer bars, Navari Rest Beer Cafe talk beer with the locals. And once you get a taste of the good stuff, <laughs> stuff um, to go back, that's right. right, yeah, you can. Yes, it's all about the hops with Maine Beer Company. The craft beer scene in the United States is exploding with over 1,900 breweries. States like Maine, Colorado, Washington, and California are leading the way in this revolution. I'm Matt Delamere, and I love beer. When I travel, I head to out-of-the-way breweries and bars to drink the beer that locals drink with the locals themselves. The beer I find outstanding, and the people, one of a kind. This is Local Brew. Local Brew is sponsored by The Great Lost Bear, serving up over 70 beers on tap daily. Cafe Nomad, art, food, coffee, and adventure. Beer Cellar, selling fine craft beer, wine, ciders, and mead. Carter's Cross Country Ski Center, your main cross country skiing source. This week on Local Brew, I'm in Portland, Maine, home of Fresh Lobster, the famous Old Port, and one of Maine's premier microbreweries, Maine Beer Company. Started in 2009 by brothers Dan and Dave Cleveland, Maine Beer Company has earned a national reputation for creating exciting, flavorful, and very hoppy American ales. In 2011, they were recognized by the Boston Globe for their Lunch IPA, which quickly became their most sought-after beer. They only brew small batches at a time, and all their beer is conditioned in the bottle, a process which is slower produces a better quality beer. The company lives by the motto, do what's right. They donate 1% of all sales to a variety of worthwhile causes, and they always put quality over quantity. All of their beer is produced in their small microbrewery here in Portland, Maine. Just two hours north of Boston, Portland is Maine's largest city, and home to some of the most exciting new restaurants and an incredible selection of local craft beer. And as a matter of fact, Portland, Maine has more bars per capita in any city in America. And one of the great ways to check out this amazing craft beer scene is on the main brew bus. I'm gonna hop on now, see if I can catch a ride. How's it going, guys? Fantastic. Got room for one more? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. The main brew bus was started in 2011 by husband and wife team Zach and Allison Poole. With their 13 passenger short bus named Lenny, they offer all inclusive brewery tours at some of Maine's best microbreweries. Hey Zach, how's it going? Good, how you doing man? So tell me a little bit about your bus, man. What's, tell me the story. Yeah, so basically I uh, do brewery tours in Portland, in the greater Portland area right now. So I wanted to give uh, you know, people the experience of uh, local Maine brews without having to drive. Zach offers several different tours, each one visiting a variety of Maine breweries. In between stops, he entertains riders with beer trivia, and if they bought beer at the brewery, he keeps it cold in his onboard cooler. How long does the tour usually last? Um, it's about four and a half to five hours. We get about 45 minutes to an hour at each location. What about you guys? How do you like the main brew bus? Woo! Yeah. That sounds like it's a success, my man. I yeah. love it. Well, I'm going to get out of your way. I'm going to check out what some of your other patrons think about this awesome bus. All right, have fun. Thanks. How's it going, guys? Hey. Hey. Excellent. So tell me about what brought you on the main brew bus today. We just moved to the area, so this is a one-stop shop to learn about Maine beer. With stops at breweries like Run of the Mill, Allagash, Rising Tide, and Bunker Brewing, riders get to experience some of Maine's best microbrews in one trip. Why'd you ride the bus today? It was one of the native driver. That's a native driver. It's true. That's right. Well, you don't have to worry about it, right? That's right. While drinking at the breweries is encouraged, drinking on the bus is not. Sorry, kids. Why are you on the bus today? Well, I just kind of like it because it's all inclusive. You know, I get food here, I got, you know, the chores, the beer, everything, just boom. One stop shop, go. all in one, a little food, a little, little grub, a little, little beer, exactly. and drive home. Yep. Now that my brew bus tour is done, it's time to head over to Maine Beer Company and meet Dan Kleban, 
one of the owners, to learn about their very hoppy beers. You must be Dan. Dan it is. Matt Delamater, how you doing? Nice, nice to, to meet you, you, Matt. Dan started as a home brewer, brewing beer for fun in his garage. Then he and his brother Dave got together and thought they might be able to sell some of the tasty stuff he'd been making. Uh, we started as just a small uh, one barrel brewery. Basically we were home brewers, um, but we could sell our beer legally to, oh, to customers. Okay. Um, I'd brew the beer, my brother would uh, take the cases, walk around the old port, uh, no kidding. Sell, sell it bottle by bottle. When they started, Dan was an attorney and Dave was a financial advisor. It took them several months before they could quit their jobs and brew beer for a living. Since then, they've seen growth each year, in part because they've distinguished themselves from other breweries in the area by focusing on very hoppy American-style ales. We wanted to brew beers that we couldn't find locally. Mm -hmm. And now how many beers do you have now? Oh geez, we have uh, Peeper, then we came out with Zoe, then we came out with Mean Old Tom, Lunch, Mo, King Titus, so that's six. Now I noticed when I tried your beer the first time, it definitely seemed like quality was what you were going after. Yeah, we, well we hoped people thought that. Um, yeah, we, I mean that was, that was definitely our idea. We thought we made, were making good beer, mm -hmm. and we definitely prided ourselves on putting out uh, a quality product, and, and still do pride ourselves on that, because people are, you know, they're paying, you know, they're paying for our beer, and we want, them to, we want to give them the money, so that's for sure. So tell me a little bit about your slogan. You can see on the, yeah. <laughs> the backs of your t-shirts around yeah. the brewery, you know, do what's right. Whenever you're coming up with a, you're in a conundrum or you're in a quandary, you have to pick A or B, I think if you just remind yourself, you know, do what's right. I think we all have instinctual gut reaction as to what the right thing to do and what the wrong thing to do is. If you do what's right in the end, stuff works out. So I wore my work boots today. Yep. Can you put me to work? Absolutely. A little free labor today? Yeah. All right, show me Anytime. around. Thanks, my man. Let's go do this. Dan is bringing me into the brew room to meet brewer Mark Fulton. Today, we'll be brewing a fresh batch of Mean Old Tom. Mark? Matt Delamater, how you doing? Great, nice to meet you. I got my work boots on. Okay. They're not as cool as yours. They're nice. I'm at your command. All right. What can I do to help? What's next? Well, let's see. So, uh, starting out, the first thing we got to do is you got to get grain into the grist case, and then we'll, we'll get it in the mash tun, warm it up, put it in the kettle, add some hops, and then knock it out. It's easy. That's it. No problem. Get some grain going? Let's do it. All right, let's go. When we come back, Mark puts me to work on the grist case. Have you ever spilled any of it? Oh, yeah. Absolutely. You're supposed to say no. Then I'll get down and dirty in the mash tun. Steamy down here. Later, I'm heading to the conditioning room to learn why they condition their beer in a bottle. This is where all of our bottles, after they've been filled with beer, come to chill out for a little while. But first, it's time for another round. plus beers on draft. Most of them are from local breweries. Portland, all around the state. If you want main microbrews, the Great Lost Bear is the place to be. Today I'm at Main Beer Company in Portland, Maine, where I've met the owner, Dan Kleben, and gotten to know a little bit more about him and his brewery. Now I'm going to learn how to brew a batch of their stout, Mean Old Tom. Alright, so I'm here with Mark Fulton, brewer at Main Beer Company, and we are about to do the grain in. Mark, what's my, what's my job? Do well, so uh, I've already put half of our base malt in the grist case, and so we're going to put all of our specialty malt in next. We're brewing a stout today, so there's a lot of it. All beer starts with a certain amount of base malt. Then depending on the type of beer being made, specialty malts are added to give it a distinct style, flavor, or color. So you can see what he means by the specialty malts. A lot different, everyone's a different color. Really making a cool little mix here. 
For this beer, we're adding five different types of specialty malt. Have you ever spilled any of it? Oh yeah, absolutely. You're supposed to say no. I mean, no, I'm a professional. I would never <laughs> spill. All right, we're ready to go. Normally the next step in the brewing process would be to add the malt and hot water to the mash tun, but Mark already has a batch started from earlier today. Because we're using a lot of grain for this beer, the malt in the mash tun is the consistency of oatmeal. Water needs to pass through the malt to the kettle, and in order for it to get there, we have to manually create pathways using a special paddle. Mark shows me how it's done. Basically, just want to kind of cut on both sides of the rakes here. A couple cuts on each side. It's basically like rowing a boat, but with just the like, paddle sideways. Just like rowing a boat. And you're right. probably going to want to wear gloves because it's very hot in there. How hot is it? Um, at this point, it's probably pushing 170 uh, hot. 170 degree water, black yeah. gloves. So, can I screw up? Uh, probably not, to be honest. I like that. Kind of <laughs> so this is what you do to, to work out every day. Just come and yeah. roll the oats. There you, you go. Know? All right, well done. That's it, that's awesome. And we can check the volume over here too, because I need to do Sweet. that. You don't need to do this? No, you don't need to. It's kind of cool it though. It ain't coming out. Know. We'll do that over here. Okay. So let's see, we're, we're bringing it in here. Just over 14 and a half barrels. The, okay. the work that's in here is being run from underneath the mash tun below yep. this convoluted piping system. Gotcha. Filling the kettle from the bottom. And uh, today we're shooting to get up to 18, so. 18 barrels. 18 barrels, and uh, once this gets to 18, we'll stop the runoff. We're okay. waiting for this, for the kettle to come to a boil. Okay. At which point, we will start adding our hops. Yep. Um, which reminds me, I probably should weigh those out. All right, you gonna do that now? Yeah, let's go ahead Can and Can I go help you? Yeah, All absolutely. Right. Weigh some hops. Today we're adding two types of hop varieties to the beer, Magnum and Centennial. Most hops are used to add flavor or aroma to beer, but not these guys. Mark says they're a high alpha bittering hop and are used to add bitterness to the beer. All right, that's cool. All right. We're at about 19, we need to get up to about 52 ounces, 52.3 ounces. Fuck, eating this one too. Because we're brewing a stout, we don't need as many hops as we would normally use for other beers. For this batch, we only need one bucket's worth. Well, that was cute. Nice so quick. All right. Let's see how these things taste. The ever important blade. Still tastes hoppy. Oh, I wouldn't eat those. Yeah, me neither. <laughs> those are for smelling. I should have probably thought about that before. And the high alpha ones, they're even worse. Yep. So if you want to go ahead just a little bit, we're getting up to, to want to get up to 52. Okay. Perfect. Nice. Fantastic. All right. Ready to put this in the kettle? Yeah, I think we're ready to go. All right. Let's do this. Okay. No wrong way to do this unless All you right. miss the Let's kettle entirely. All right. <laughs> That's it. That's it. All right, sweet. Close it up. Down. Awesome. All right. Now that the hops are in the kettle, it needs to boil for about an hour. However, the mash tun needs to be cleaned out, so Mark can start brewing another batch of beer. He shows me how it's done. All right, so we gotta get all the grain out of here now. All right. So we can put the next one that we put in the grist case in here. So Perfect. we gotta get everything out of here first and out to the bin outside. We're making room. All right, let's do all right. it. So Mark's trying to punch a hole with adding more water onto this grain and barley so we can push it down, pushing all that grain so it starts to pop through the bottom hole. There it is. The grain is collected in these small green bins and then moved by forklift to a trailer waiting outside. It takes several trips to fully empty the mash tun. Sustainability is important to Maine Beer Company, which is why they make sure nothing is left unused. All the spent grain they've used to make beer is donated to a farmer in Yarmouth, who uses it to make compost and feed his pigs. Once the bulk of the grain is removed, Someone needs to climb into the mash tun and clean out all the small stuff. All right. Guess who they volunteered for the job? This is like my first apartment. It's steamy down here. Tools of the trade when you're getting down and dirty. It's kind of awkward, huh? Yeah. Now the hose is fun. The squeegee is where you get some serious work done. You guys leave me in here a while. Let me take a bath. 
The final step in the brewing process is conditioning. At Maine Beer Company, they condition all of their beer in bottle. This requires a special temperature controlled room, which is located on the complete opposite side of the brewery. Dan takes me over to check it out. So what happens here? What, 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 is, what is conditioning? Tell me about that. This is where all of our bottles, after they've been filled with beer, come to chill out for a little while. Okay. What happens is all the beer undergoes a second fermentation, uh, which will do several things to the beer. Uh, the primary thing it does is it carbonates the beer. Gotcha. The beer, when it goes in the bottle, is pretty much flat. What we do uh, in our bottling tank, however, is we reintroduce sugar back to the beer. Okay. And we don't filter our beer. So we still have yeast in our beer too. Okay. So in the bottle. In the bottle. Okay. So yeast plus sugar, Over fermentation. Time. Creates the carbonation. Exactly. Gotcha. So uh, in the fermenters, what happens when the yeast is fermenting, when it's undergoing that primary fermentation, is all that CO2 that the yeast puts off mm -hmm. is escaping. And it, it goes down a tube. Um, you may have seen it back in the yeah, brewery. Yeah, I did, yeah. Um, it's pretty important. If you didn't do that, the tank would explode and the CO2 gotcha. pressure would build up. Gotcha. But what we do now uh, in the bottle, you put a cap on that bottle, it starts to ferment again, CO2 it, wants to get out, but it can't, it dissolves in the beer, natural carbonation. And then they cook right in the bottle. Exactly. So we're, we're of the opinion that it helps to preserve uh, the freshness of the beer. But the downside is, is it has to sit over here for 10 days, a lot of space it takes mm -hmm. up, it takes a little bit more time and effort, uh, but we think it's worth it. And the payoff is in the taste, which That's is right. what matters. That's what matters. That's awesome. There is a payoff of helping you brew your beer all yeah, day long. I suppose. I suppose we can give you some samples. Awesome. Let's yeah, do awesome that. Yeah. Thanks. Coming up, Dan and I sample some of the beer I helped brew. Mean old Tom. Let's do this. Cheers. Then we're heading to one of Portland's best beer bars to talk beer with the locals. I didn't know anything about beer probably two or three years ago, and this is one of the places that sort of introduced me to real beer. But first, it's time for another round. Come into the Great Lost Bear on Thursday nights for our craft beer showcase event, where we feature a different local craft brewery each week. Today I'm at Maine Beer Company, and the owner, Dan Kleben, is bringing me to the tasting room to sample some of his beers. We'll, uh, we'll try some Mean Old Tom, since that's what you made today. Absolutely, Had let's one do chilling this. down. So tell me about Mean Old Tom. Uh, yeah, it's an American-style stout, about 6.5% alcohol. One kind of unique thing that we do with this beer is it's aged on natural vanilla beans. So you're definitely awesome. going to get a, some, some natural vanilla All character right. out of this. Let's do this. Cheers. Oh, yeah, you can absolutely taste vanilla. That's amazing. Yeah. That's good. That's really good. So what, what's next? All right, so that's one. Line them up. That's one style. Line them up. And we'll start, uh, so we started with stout. We'll stick with the, uh, the darker beer theme before we head to another, another style. This is our newest beer, okay. uh, King Titus. So this is a bold kind of American porter, 7.5%. Pretty fine line between a porter and a stout, yeah. and you'll have different experts give you different opinions as to what separates the two. Mm -hmm. In my mind, uh, in the way that I tend to distinguish them, mm -hmm. uh, porter's not going to be nearly as roasty, and it's going to be a little bit hoppier. Okay. So this has so a this lot is more. Where you kind of infuse that hop. Yeah, we start we okay. start putting Going more hops into the beer. That's right, uh, and the hops start to blend with the chocolatey mm -hmm. uh, chocolatiness of the beer. Awesome. So All right. that's Let's what this beer is. Down the hatch. Oh yeah, this is the hops. This is hoppy with. This the This can be a little bit more bitter from the hops. Much mm -hmm. more hop flavor in it. Uh, and then the last one we'll try is just pretty much hops. Just hops in a bottle. Hops. Hops in a bottle, but you know, but balanced. Um, nothing that's gonna wreck your palate. So this is pretty hop forward, American style IPA, seven percent alcohol. So we can drink the whole bottle of this one. Yes, we okay. don't have to just sip it. And, yeah. <laughs> so it's gonna be pretty intense hop aromatics on this one. Oh yeah, wow! You can even smell them. Ooh. Yeah, really citrusy, um, kind of grapefruit, passion Bam. fruit. Yeah, so this is one. Uh, it's one of my favorite. It's one I, I think really, it might be mine too. One I really enjoy. Cheers, Cheers to man. that. Well, thank you very much. Yeah, thanks for coming, man. Dan has showed me his, his hood. He's shown me how to make some beer. I met Mean Tom. I've drank his beer. I've worked for him. And uh, I can't thank you enough, man. Hey, thank you, brother. thanks, brother. Man Beer Company. Appreciate it. Got to check it out. 
Now that my time at Maine Beer Company is done, it's off to one of Portland's best beer bars, Navari Rest Beer Cafe, to talk beer with the locals. Founded in 2000 by Yarmouth native Eric Michu, Navari Res means to start a revolution in Latin. It was chosen after Eric traveled around the world, trying beers from different countries, but couldn't find the same variety of beers back home. It started pretty big. I started with, I think, 200 bottles wow. and 25 taps. I wanted to keep it around 200, 250, just to make it a little more manageable. As, as manageable as manageable. I can see. Yeah. Yeah. 250 um, is manageable, just so you know. But I, I'm a bit of a geek collector, and I just I have a hard time saying no when new and interesting stuff comes out. We're up around the four to 500 bottle range, and I've installed eight more taps, so now we're at 33 taps. 33 taps over 400 beers. Yeah. That's incredible. Matt. Matt, how are you, man? Matt. Matt. Nice to meet, you, meet man. you, Pleasure. What, what brings you into this fine establishment of beer gardens today? Uh, it's most for the beer. Uh, you know, I didn't, I didn't know anything about beer probably two or three years ago, and this is one of the places that sort of introduced me to real beer. Right. Um, and once you get a taste of the good stuff. It's tough um, to go back. That's man. right. Yeah, you can. Can you tell me a little bit about your experience with Maine Beer Company? Yeah, those guys are awesome. Um, I'm proud to say that we bought the first case that they ever sold commercially. The first case? The first case they ever bought sold here. commercially. They wow. sold to us, they brought it in, and you know we've yeah. been supporting them from day one. Have you guys ever tried anything from Maine Beer Company? Yes. yes. Uh, the Peeper L I've tried. Really enjoyed it. I think the Peeper was the first beer that you know I initially got my hands on. So you weren't afraid of the hops? You're, no, you're not afraid of no, the hops? No, not at all. No, it's, awesome. it's exactly what I'm looking for. You guys know anything about Maine Beer Company? A little bit. A little bit? Yeah. Uh, it's awesome. Now, you guys don't work for Maine Beer Company. Yeah. Not main beer company. So another street. Yeah. You, okay, where do you guys work? Allagash. Allagash. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. We have Allagash sitting with main beer. This is something. This is something new for me. You guys gonna arm wrestle it somewhere in the night? Or it's or it's cool. I used to work for. Oh, okay. All right. So it's a friendly arrangement. Now tell me about this awesome room that we had to come through a padlocked door to get to. What's the deal? This is the magical chalice room. I call that the uprising. And to become part of the uprising, you've got to drink through a list of 230 beers. 230 beers. That I've chosen specifically to showcase the different styles and flavor profiles. You have as long as you want to finish it. When you actually do finish it, you'll get one of these chalices, personally engraved with a date that you finished. Can and I you touch one? Ranking. Oh yeah, touch the uh, Persian honey, that one's mine. So yeah, it's, it's cool, it's a 20 ounce uh, glass, so for the most part you'll get 25% more beer for the rest of your life. There's no extras, there's nothing else you have to do. Because once you drink through that list, you've got a really solid beer education. Yeah. You've tasted through beers that you may not like, that you may not knew that you liked. And by the end of that, you're, you're pretty much a beer professional. So you have your PhD in beer. Yeah. Just, just right here in the virus. There you go. It's been an exciting day here in Portland. I got to hop on board one of the coolest new ways to drink Maine craft beer, the Maine Brew Bus. Maine is booming with their uh, beer scene, and you know Portland especially. Um, you know you got new breweries popping up almost uh, monthly. Places like Maine Beer Company and Rising Tide, and you know they're just doing a great job with their beer. Then I made my way to one of Maine's best microbreweries, Maine Beer Company where I learned the story behind their very hoppy American brews from the original hop master, Dan Kleban. Yeah, I started uh, as a home brewer, brewing okay. beer in my garage. That's nice. And my brother and I got together and said, well, why don't we take this little uh, garage operation and move it into a bigger garage. When was that? Uh, we started in the summer of 2009, July of wow. 2009. That's, not, that's we, not too long ago. Now about a little over three years ago. Awesome. I got to see how much work goes into brewing one of their small batch beers from brewer Mark Fulton who wasn't afraid to put me to work. Tools of the trade, when you're getting down and dirty. Yeah. You guys leave me in here a while. I'm gonna take a bath. Then, I headed over to Navari Res Beer Cafe, where I got to meet the owner, Eric Misha, and learn about his passion for great craft beer. You know, I, I started brewing in my parents' kitchen, just out of high school, and just got a taste for beer, loved beer. Yes, it was a day full of hard work, great people, and very, very hoppy American craft beer from one of Maine's best microbreweries, Maine Beer Company. 
Local Brew is sponsored by The Great Lost Bear, serving up over 70 beers on tap daily. Cafe Nomad, art, food, coffee, and adventure. Beer Cellar, selling fine craft beer, wine, ciders, and mead. Carter's Cross Country Ski Center, your main cross country skiing source.